Hey, this is Ricky Gantz with G220 Ministries. You can find out more by going to www.g220ministries.com. I want to talk about a, a passage of Scripture in the book of Galatians. Now, Paul writes to the church in Galatia in the first century, and he warns them about receiving a, a false gospel or receiving a false spirit, a false Christ. And see, th this is nothing new. As I said, Paul writes to the church in Galatia in the first century, but th this is nothing new. We, we see the same things even in our society today, even in our culture today. In 2020, we see false gospels or false Christ being proclaimed. We see it with Jehovah Witnesses. We see it with Mormons or the Church of Latter-day Latter Saints of Jesus Christ. We see it with uh, so-called Hebrew Israelites. We see this being pushed. We see it in the, the oneness theology or, or modalism, where the Trinity is rejected and it is a false Christ because it is uh, a rejection, again, of the triune God. So a, a false gospel is being proclaimed or a false Christ is being proclaimed. And Paul warns them not not to fall for this, not to be jumping on a gospel that has not been presented before and not to be accepting a Christ who has not been presented before. And as we can look in God's word and see who Christ is and see what the gospel is, Paul's warning to the church in Galatia should stand to us even today not to jump on these false Christ or false gospels. And so he writes here in Galatians chapter 1, Verses 6 through 9, he says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As if or as we have said before, so now I say, I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. So Paul makes its emphatic plea to them, repeating it twice, that anyone preaching to you a false gospel, even if it is us or an angel coming down from heaven preaches to you a false gospel. Let them be accursed. Let them be anathematized. Don't go off buying these false gospels that say you must work and do these things to achieve salvation or that salvation is found in anything other than Christ alone, by grace alone, in faith alone, in Him. Not any other types of things added to the gospel. Uh, it's Jesus plus anything else. It is Christ and Christ alone. And so therefore, if anybody comes preaching a gospel contrary to that, let them be accursed. And if anybody comes preaching a Christ who is not the true Christ, let them be accursed. It's very important that we get this and we understand this because in our society, we see it all around us, people preaching gospel messages that are not the biblical gospel. And so we must be on guard for the truth. Now, when you go to 2 Corinthians, Paul again is dressing, addressing the church in Corinth, and he's writing to them a second time in this second epistle to them. And he says in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 4, he says, For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus that one, or proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it readily enough. See, Paul, in his letters to the church in Corinth, is, is giving them rebukes uh, for the things that they're not doing correctly. And he's saying, look, they come to you and you're, you're putting up with it. Don't put up with these things. We, we are to, as it says in Galatians there, that they are to be accursed. You, you call them to repent. You rebuke them for preaching a false gospel, and you let them be accursed because, again, these false gospels will lead many people to hell. These false Christs will lead many people to hell, and so you rebuke it. You strongly stand against it. You sharply rebuke it, and you call them to repent, and you 
do not give it an opportunity to grow in the lives of other people. This is why you don't tolerate oneness theology or a modalistic understanding of the gospel. We don't call or consider them brothers in Christ because they may agree with us on many different things within the scriptures, but yet still getting the understanding of Christ wrong. This is why we don't tolerate the same thing with Mormons or Jehovah Witnesses or anyone who would preach like the Roman Catholic Church, for example, who, who do not necessarily preach a false god in the sense of uh, that they will tell you that God is triune by nature. They will tell you that Jesus is God, yet they will preach to you a different gospel. They are a apostate church. They've apostatized from the truth long and long, long, long time ago. But they will teach to you a, a Jesus plus, plus keeping the sacraments, plus adhering to the church's teaching. Um, and they've never recanted from their counsel, which says anyone who believes in Jesus alone by faith alone is to be anathematized. They've never rejected that or repented of that teaching. And so they come preaching a false gospel. Now, when you go to uh, the first epistle of Corinthians, Paul again writing to them, this is the first time in 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through the second chapter, uh, verse 16. And Paul writes to them here, <clears throat> for the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerner I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in, for since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand a sign, and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were no, of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that, as it is written, let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the, the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in him? See also, no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. 
Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand these things freely given to us by God. And we may impart this in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he, does, and he is, is not able to understand them, because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So brothers and sisters, in Christ, do not give in or uh, appeal to or give any type of foothold to those coming and preaching a false gospel. Rebuke them. Call them for the false gospel that they preach. Call them out for it. And stand on these truths that have been given to us by God as a gift from God who has given to His people the Spirit of God who is discerning these truths. Because there's a lot of manipulation in the world. There's a lot of people preaching a false gospel or proclaiming to others a false Christ. So we who have the truth must stand for it must stand against those false proclamations of the gospel that we might call other men and women to the truth that is only found in, in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone who was buried, who was crucified on the cross, buried, and on the third day rose again. This Christ and this Christ only is the one who saves. He is fully God and fully man. The second person of the Trinity came and humbled himself, took on the form of his own creation and lived a perfect sinless life, never once violating God's law, obedient unto death, death on the cross. And this is who we proclaim. This is who we preach. Christ crucified, risen, and coming again. And the only way man can be saved is by faith in Christ by the grace of God alone.